That's going to go against Tennessee. Here, holding offense number 78. Ten yards to the previous spot. Two first down. It is Ollie Lane who was working in the middle of that line of scrimmage. As you take a look to your right, you just see the throw down and those takedowns are easier to see by the back judge. Ollie Lane, of course, at center. Cooper Mace, who is out with an injury. You see the sp speed at which Tennessee is trying to work. Pass is caught by Wright. He's back down to the 15-yard line. 18 seconds to go. Tennessee's going to take a timeout. Timeout. Tennessee. Okay, hang on. What timeout is in Tennessee? As you look at Tennessee right now, but they've got at least two opportunities to take a shot at the end zone. Joe Milton in his final game here at Neyland Stadium, 13 of 18, 235. Three touchdowns. And look, A.J. Swan hadn't been bad either on the other side. 11 of 17. 11 of 17 for 132 yards and a touchdown. Joe Milton's just been able to push Please the ball down the, the field more frequently. This uh, fish eating crew can't wait for this halftime horn to sound. They can reset a little bit. It got a little squirrely on them here in the last uh, 10 or 15 minutes. Here's Milton. Pressure comes. They pick it up across the middle. Pass is dropped in the end zone. Man, did that have some heat on it. Looking for Jacob Warren. Broken up by Jalen Mahoney. That's his second pass breakup of the day. And, it, and again, when you look, that's not easy to go through the body of the big fella. You know, we talk about the radar gun for baseball. I'd love to see what he's throwing that football. Oh, it's coming out high. Oh, buddy, is it ever. <laughs> Pressure again on Milton. To the corner of the end zone. That one is incomplete. And there is a flag. That'll be pass interference against Vanderbilt in the corner of that end zone. Looking for Chad's Nimrod, Mahoney over there, and I think there was a bump. However unintentional it was, there was a bump that knocked him off his route. There was a bump. Now you watch here towards the end. Jalen Mahoney never looks back. And with that being said, Van gets him off the spot. Defense number 23. They're yelling that it was uncatchable, but it doesn't matter. I mean, you still have to get your eyes back. Right here, man, you take a look and you see the jumbo try and just impeded the screen. I mean, his ability to get to the football. Ten seconds here. Opportunity for two quick plays. A couple of tight ends. Joe Milton going to try to run for it, and he will. Touchdown, Tennessee. Tennessee career. Joe Milton here with the run pass option. <laughs> he faked it to Warren. He walks in. Three touchdown passes, a touchdown running. They had five seconds left on the clock as Tennessee's trying to make this a 21 point advantage before halftime. The 
that Campbell put after is up and good. Boy, some more flags, some more pushing and shoving. Side, I mean, you see punches being thrown. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, Vanderbilt number 36. The 15 yard penalty will be enforced on a succeeding kickoff. That's the first unsportsmanlike conduct foul for number 36. It's Taco Wright, who's Older brother Mike Wright is actually in attendance, a former Vanderbilt quarterback and now at Mississippi State. Yeah, when you look at these guys right now, I mean, this game is emotionally charged and emotions are getting the best of these guys. Still got to play the game. A lot of football to be played. Tennessee with five seconds to go before halftime. Kick it off from midfield. I think Coach Heifel's making sure his staff is going to keep his players on the bench if there's some more Absolutely. shenanigans. Absolutely. He, he, he sees what's happening in this ball game. He's got to tell his players to be smart. Let's just play football. This kick will sail into the seats. But I'll tell you, Dave, that's what you get when you play like these rivalry games. Yeah. It, it comes out. It just does. A.J. Swan. 11 of 17 for 132 yards. Vandy just going to take a knee, and there is Ken Williamson, our referee in the white hat there, telling both those lines of scrimmage, just, hey, no funny business, let's go. <laughs> Everybody's just holding their breath right now. <laughs> these teams get into their respective locker room areas and that will do it for the first half boy some fireworks but mainly on the Tennessee side as they put up 345 yards of offense and 31 points and 30 minutes of play let's go down to Taylor thank you Dave coach over 300 yards total offense in the first half what do you see on that side of the ball uh, a lot of efficiency in the past game, run game we got going here uh, in the second quarter. Got to maintain some balance here in the second half. Things got a little contentious to end the half. What's your message to your team for this final half of the regular season? Yeah, be smart. Um, don't do something that embarrasses you, takes away from the team. Be smart. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. I could use that advice myself in my everyday <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, counts. And the details will certainly be important here. Clarification on the foul for sportsmanlike conduct that were called during the melee. The numbers for Tennessee were 9 and 90 for Vanderbilt number 64. That's Vanderbilt 64, Tennessee number 9 and number 90. We clarified that. We got you, Ken. <laughs> you did yeah, it. Hey. We did. Dave Neal all yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. We had Ken last week at Auburn against New Mexico State, and there were quite a few penalties in, in that game. We, yeah, we, we got to know. Yeah, we got a lot of Ken last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we are just uh, moments away from 
third quarter football. Vanderbilt, of course, will have the opening possession. They won the coin toss, deferred, and Tennessee got it to start the game, and they marched down the field and scored on their opening possession. The ninth time they've done that this year in 12 games. Vanderbilt. McGowan is dropped before he could get to the 20-yard line. So this Vanderbilt offense back on the field. We saw the numbers, 189 total yards. Listen, they didn't play a bad football game in the first half. No turnovers. Anytime you don't turn the football over and you can score points, then it puts you in a positive light. Now it's about more production. So this group's got to be a little more proactive, taking shots down the field and scoring points here in the second half. So A.J. Swan, if you're just joining us, got the start. Started the beginning of the season. Had some health issues midway through the year and lost that starting job to Ken Seals. But is back running the show here against Tennessee. First pass caught out to the 24-yard line. That one going to London Humphreys. It's a gain of about seven. There is a flag down, however, right around the 20-yard line. Offside, number nine, lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, repeat first down. Boy, we, Tyler Barron has had a face mask, a couple of offsides penalties. He's had a personal foul in this game. He is. It's the focus. <laughs> it's the lack of focus and the energy that's involved in rivalry game. It shows up all the time. So now, man, he's just got to refocus, get himself calmed down, get back to the middle and play football. First down at five for the Commodores. Inside handoff goes to Cedric Alexander. Alexander in that first half, five carries for 28 yards, a little over five and a half yards per carry. As you watch Vanderbilt, with all these tight sets, man, they're trying to create double teams and move the line of scrimmage here coming out in an FIB formation, formation into the boundary. Here's McGowan in motion. Well, McGowan is over there and he just wouldn't throw it. And there's another flag as Castillo, is that Castillo? Well, that's Julian Hernandez, his helmet came off. Personal foul, hands to the face, defense number 21. 15 yard penalty in the previous spot, automatic first down. Amari Thomas getting his hands underneath the face mask of Hernandez. And when you see that, that one, that one wasn't egregious. Sometimes, men, his D linemen are rising up, and those hands sometimes go to the face and those helmets fly. That's part of the game. Four man rush, quick slant near side pass is caught at the 44 yard line. Nice grab there by Quincy Skinner. It picks up six. That's really what AJ Swan's going to have to do. He's going to have to get the ball out of his hands fast because this. Front four, front five, however many they bring, when they can get to the quarterback. Three down look for Tennessee. Five man pressure. Hand it off. Alexander, another flag comes out. Is right in the area of holding. That would have been third down and short for the Commodores. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 99. 15 yards per oh, wow. run, run, automatic first down. Yeah, you do it. My fault, sir. That is Karad Garland. As we look here in the middle of the screen, when you see him here, and 
Oh yeah, I mean clear as day there. He's clear and intentional. So. He... That is the third penalty on this drive against the Tennessee defensive unit and that moves the ball inside the 40 down to the 39. Swan lofts it up in the air and that one is out of bounds. It'll be second down. Six penalties in this game against Tennessee. Vanderbilt has been penalized seven times. And AJ just not having enough time to set his feet with the inside pressure on that Tennessee volunteer front. Coming out in 12 personnel. Vanderbilt one back two tight ends two wide outs and a condensed set and off goes to Alexander no gate on the play and now it'll be third down and ten Going to 11 personnel. That's why you see Tennessee subbing to a nickel look, meaning five DBs, two backers, four down. Play clock down to one. They just do get the snap away. Pressure comes. McGowan can't hang on to it as Swan is hammered to the turf. Pierce off the edge again. They just can't block him today. My man is, <laughs> he is in the backfield almost every pass attempt. He's aligning so wide. Boy, Capers immediately grabbed that left leg like he had a cramp. And you look here at the end of the play, like with Capers, he comes in. And immediately gra grabs his hamstring. Looks to be okay. You know, it's funny that Tennessee fans boo. It's all it's okay, <laughs> but I mean, how many extra points have we seen where <laughs> their guys lay down on the ground? You know what? It's. Oh, man, the chess match of strategies. I know. It is. It's crazy. Oh, boy. I don't know how you fix it. I, I really I don't. don't. No, I'm I'm with you there, Dave. I, we see it from time to time. And yeah, it's uh, an opportunity to slow down the game. Yeah. Squirrel white in motion. Milton looking to throw. Joe stepping up in the pocket. Directing traffic, and we'll just throw that one out of bounds. Good coverage downfield by the Commodores. It'll be second down. And you watch Joe here. Good protection in the pocket, but just like good awareness by him, just keeping his eyes down the field, directing traffic, and just saying enough is enough, pushing it out of bounds. That one's incomplete. Looked like that was knocked down at the line of scrimmage. One of those big offensive linemen. Actually, Bryce Cowan came in, it looked like, maybe from his safety spot. You know, Clark Lee and his defense just trying to mix up their looks. You know, showing three down now in third down, four down, bringing five. Boy, nice throw by Milton. Pass is caught. Here's an opportunity. Ramel Keaton to the end zone. Touchdown, Volunteers. 46 yards, his second of the day.
know, here they bring six-man pressure, and it's just a nice job by Keaton of spinning out and turning on the Jets to get to the end zone. Again, anytime that you get speed and space and opportunities for one-on-ones, Tennessee can make you pay. What a day for Joe Milton. Going after. Up and good. Joe Milton is now thrown for 314 yards and four touchdowns. His first 300-yard passing game of his Tennessee career. And Tennessee is putting it on the doors. Should game. There's no better place to get in on the action. And with the SEC Nation crew at the Dr. Pepper SEC Fanfare, head over to the SEC Network for the fun at noon Eastern to join Marty McGee and SEC Nation before the big game next Saturday. Georgia and Alabama. I'll tell you what, Alabama in a world of hurt just missed a field goal, trailing Auburn 21-20 now. That one's getting late in the third quarter. It's a ball game now. Anytime that you play down there on the plane for an iron ball, and Alabama's coming to the house, then that group's going to play. So it's a good ball game. It's going to go down to the end. Clark Lee concerned about this one right here. 38-10 after Tennessee scores their first points in the second half since UConn. They went scoreless in the second half against Missouri, scoreless in the second half against Georgia. Swan. And a flag comes in. It's like that's going to go against Tennessee as Will Shepard was trying to come out of his break. Pass interference, zero on the defense. The penalty will place the ball at the spot of the foul and includes an automatic first down. You watch the Nico Slaughter here in coverage. Just a pull and tug at the top of the route. It's easy for the referee to call. That's been a matchup out there on the perimeter. 12 personnel, another condensed formation by Vanderbilt. Nice job by Junior Sherrill again on that jet sweep action that he scored on earlier. Thirty-eight ten, under nine minutes to go. AJ Swan has battled through some hits in this one, stayed in the game on his feet. His first start. Since Kentucky midway through the season on the run, flags come out as he launches it, and it is caught but out of bounds by London Humphreys. It looks like Ashmore was back there grabbing on somebody's jersey, and then A.J. Swan got hit at the end of that play as well. Holding offense number 50, personal foul, rough the passer. Defense in the 20. Foul for offset. Play it down. Play it down. And you see AJ moving to his right. Again, you know, this is a ball game where. You just got to be able to keep your composure. The referees are trying to keep this game under control. Nowhere to run. Patrick Smith swallowed up. And more flags are down. There's one around the 40, one around the 30. Josephs and Simmons. Goodness, we can't get a, a clean series. <laughs> Not yet.
Illegal shift, offense, two players moving at the same time and did not reset for a full second. That penalty will be declined. It's all the place, third down. been a tough day on third downs. And Tennessee goes to their rush front as they bring in two pass rushers. They're showing a six-man front and all up look. And another flag. Prior to expiration of the play clock, timeout Vanderbilt. They're first to the half. It'll be a 30-second timeout. That did seem like a quick clock. Yeah. That's what Clark Lee's trying to get some clarification on. And I think he got it. So they got the timeout taken before the penalty. A third down coming up. Ken Seals. He is a guy that started most of the games after A.J. Swan was relieved of his duties. After an injury in Kentucky and some turnover issues, he is certainly ready to go if needed. Again, the senior out of Texas started 21 games, but right now AJ Swan just trying to shake it off and stay in this one. He's taking a few shots. He's taking some shots today now. That that front seven for Tennessee has been active, and now look for this front to play man and bring a little pressure. There pressure it is. Comes. That one is incomplete, almost picked off. That bounced off Skinner and went in the air. And it hits the turf, and it'll be a punting situation now for the Commodore. Skinner here running a pick slant, and it comes, bounces right off his knee. Low ball. Commodore is looking to punt. Hey, ball. Sends it down the field, and this one takes a favorable bounce down to around the 16-yard line, and that is where Tennessee will have it, a 47-yard punt. Well, Tennessee's offense has looked really good, and Joe Milton in particular has just been dynamic today. 71% completion percentage. 314 yards, four touchdowns, no picks, and he has found Ramel Keaton for some huge plays, averaging over 30 yards a catch with a couple of touchdowns. Ramel Keaton's been outstanding. He's been able to win the one-on-ones. That one is almost picked off. Let's go down to Taylor. Coach Heupel told me before the game, I really want Joe Milton to enjoy this day, the last start in Neyland Stadium. And I feel confident in saying he's done just that, guys, down here on the Tennessee sideline. He has been smiling ear to ear, interacting with all his teammates. These are those moments that you really enjoy the game of college football. He has shown it all over his face in his mannerisms down here. Truly a leader, like Coach said, it hadn't always been easy, but he's committed to this team, and it's definitely been a night he's enjoyed. And, you know, his buddy Hinden Hooker's back in town. Hinden with the Detroit Lions now. And obviously they played on Thanksgiving Day. And such a special bond between those two guys uh, for the couple of years they were together. And as Coach Heupel has told us, is that there's a very similar relationship that has developed between ago, but he come. Nico and Joe on this year's team. As Milton sends it down the field, and that one is incomplete. Pressure here by Langston Patterson, flushing Joe out of the pocket. And Joe just simply tries to put this in a place where Caleb Webb can get to it or nobody can. Oh, 
That's a good defensive stop for those Vanderbilt Commodores. They should wind up with decent field position. So Ross gets the punt away. McGowan back to return it. It is returnable. Backpedaling and it tripped up. Flags come out. Well, that was just a mess <laughs> for Vanderbilt. Yes. But well, great coverage by Tennessee. Warren Burrell down first. Good open field wrap tackle. During return, block in the back, receiving team number 36. 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Tackle right. Commodores will have it. They're down big here in Neely. Here against uh, Tennessee on the 117th edition of this rivalry. Will Shepard with a couple of catches. Cedric Alexander had some nice runs early, but Tennessee's defensive line has put the clamps on him. And A.J. Swan had a nice start to this one, but boy, he had lately hadn't had a whole lot of time to do anything. Yeah, that Tennessee front settled down, and uh, really when they get him in third down situations, when they've been able to apply pressure. Hand it off to Alexander. Pick up a couple of yards. Cedric, 5'9", 199. We'll see a bunch of him next season. His best game this year against Alabama A&M in week two. Went for 87 yards on 12 carries. He's a 5,000-yard rusher in high school. Counted for 75 touchdowns. Wow. That's a production. Boy, nice throw by A.J. Swan. That pass is caught by Junior Sherrill. Boy, laid it in the only spot he could throw it for Sherrill to catch it. A little misdirection here off the boot action. And he throws on time. Again, anytime he's been able to throw on time or get the ball quickly out of his hands, he's been effective. There's a gain of 21 for the Commodores. Moves it out to the 44-yard line. 5.40 to go here in the third quarter. Commodores have lost nine in a row after they got off to that 2-0 start. Pressure off the edge is Alexander. Keeps his feet alive, crosses the midfield stripe into Tennessee territory. So, nice gain of seven to start that series of downs. And Tennessee changing, changing it up a little bit. With their look, instead of just staying static, bringing some pressure off the edge, trying to condense the run lane on first down. Since that seems to be the offensive choice from early down situations. Here's McGowan, a little bit of a reverse. McGowan, nowhere to go. He will lose four or five yards. Actually, get lose him, lose six yards on the play. Will, Will Brooks there on that play. Tremendous stop in just doing his job out there, containing the field on the edge. That's what you do. If you're a contained player, be a contained player. Vanderbilt, one of eight, the third down. The zone. Swan wrestled to the turf. Brought down by Tyler Barron. His sixth sack of the year. And A.J. Swan is not getting up. In off the pressure, they're just able to run an inside game and stunt in there. I mean, he gets brought down with a little bit of violence by Tyler Barron, and 
AJ Swan's been under pressure all day. Taylor. Earlier in this half, I was on the Vanderbilt sideline, and it really didn't look like A.J. Swan was going back out. He was sitting on the bench wincing, didn't have his helmet, and the medical team was around him. They had Ken Seals on the sideline warming up. All signs pointed to him going out. But A.J. stood up, said he was fine, and returned out there. He's a fighter, but like we said, he's been dealing with injuries all season, and the wear and tear of this game is certainly affecting him. Yeah, he has uh, taken some shots here. Well, this, you know, give credit to that Tennessee front. They have certainly tightened those chin straps. And after a first uh, five or six minutes of that first quarter, these guys have been putting the heat on A.J. Swan. I mean, they've brought it. I mean, when you look at the number of pressures, I think six pressures on the day. A total of three sacks, four TFLs. Ken Seals getting ready to go. The senior who had been starting at quarterback. Dylan Sampson now in at running back. Joe Milt stays in the game. Tennessee up 28. A little quick screen on the perimeter. Quick screen turns into a big gain as they hit Squirrel White. So dynamic with the ball in his hands. Gain of 38 brought down by Patterson. Here's Sampson. He gets to midfield. No. Blow it dead there. So a gain of four. Little play fake to Sampson. Milton airing it out, going for it all. Off the fingertips and incomplete. Boy, that was a chance for Ramel Keaton to pick up his third touchdown of the day and went right <laughs> through his hands. Did you see the arm strength? Joe Milton? <laughs> Take a look here. And he threw it late and still threw it out there about a yard and a half just off the fingertips. So third down now. Pressure comes. Pass is caught, and that'll be good enough for a first down as they go to McCallum Castles. They'll spot his forward progress. Not around the 43-yard line. And that's probably where I've seen Joe Milton mature the most throughout this season to go from reprogression with pressure. We'll play action here. Another nice throw complete inside the 30. That one goes to White again. Squirrel White starting to add to his totals. That's six catches now for Squirrel. Seven different receivers have caught a pass today for Tennessee. That handoff goes to Sampson. Squirrel White, six catches, 83 yards. Ramel Keaton, four for 122. Jacob Warren, three for 82. This pass caught down the near sideline by Caleb Webb. Did you just continue to see these splits by Tennessee? Almost numbers to numbers. With these splits, man, they make it extremely hard for you to defend. So you're having to defend vertical and horizontal grass. Man, he gets some fresh D-Libet in. 
on first down and 10. Another red zone trip for the Volunteers. They are three out of three in the red zone today. You just wonder how much more that they're going to leave Joe Milton out there on the field. This was all coming into today. Certainly they have dropped in red zone touchdown percentages and this one will go down to about the two yard line as Chaz Nimrod picks up 10 yards. It'll be first and goal for Tennessee. Balls line up quickly. Milton again. Another touchdown for Joe Milton, his second rushing touchdown of the day. He's now accounted for six touchdowns. Joe Milton here just sees the end crash down and the defender standing flat footed on the perimeter. So he just outruns Jalen Mahoney <laughs> to the goal line. <laughs> Enjoy the day. Wheels. Enjoy the day, Joe Milton. He is the first player since Jonathan Crompton to be responsible for six touchdowns in a game. That happened back in 2009 against Memphis. Point after is up and good. And well, Joe Milton, this coach wanted him to enjoy the day. I think he has done more than that. How about these numbers for Big Joe? 383 yards through the air, four touchdowns, no interceptions. He's rushed for two touchdowns. Not a ton of yards, just five for 11, but two of them found pay dirt. He's flexing on him. I see you, Joe. What a way to finish your regular season wearing the orange jersey. Of course, started the first two games of that 21 season, then got hurt. Hendon Hooker took over and you know, never looked back. Finished last year as the MVP of the Orange Bowl. Tennessee's win over Clemson.